economists know that a firm maximizes its profit when it produces a quantity where its marginal revenue at that quantity is equal to its marginal cost of production. Therefore, it's important to understand how marginal revenue is derived from the information that we have available. Graphically, when we're dealing with a straight line demand curve, as we see here, what we notice about marginal revenue is that marginal revenue starts at the same point as the demand curve on the vertical axis, but then it's actually twice as steep as the demand curve. So we get something that's slightly different, but it starts at the same point here, but then intersects at a different point down here on the horizontal axis. So we could say, for example, let's say both of these had a vertical intercept of 8. And let's say that our demand curve intersected the quantity axis at a quantity of 40. It would then be the case that our marginal revenue curve would intersect the axis at a quantity of 20. And for the most part, for courses that don't require calculus or don't use a lot of math, knowing just what this looks like qualitatively or graphically is enough but it's still sometimes interesting and for some courses necessary to understand the math behind what it is that we see here. Let's take a look here at a real demand curve to use as an example. So here let's say the quantity demanded is equal to 40 minus 5 times the price. You'll notice that this equation here is consistent with what I've drawn here graphically because if we were to look at price is zero, we notice that quantity demanded is 40. So we should hit our quantity axis at 40, which we do. And if we were to set quantity demanded equal to zero, we would notice that our price is going to be equal to eight, which is why we see it hitting up here on our vertical axis at eight. So we can think about what happens here and how we can get from this demand curve to our marginal revenue curve. The first thing that's helpful to do is rather than take our demand curve here directly, to rearrange things algebraically into what we call the inverse demand curve. That's just a fancy way of saying solve for price. So what we see here is if I were to add 5p to both sides and subtract quantity demanded from both sides, I thought we'd just call it q now, what we get is 5p is equal to 40 minus q, and then to get p by itself, we would just divide both sides of this equation by 5, and we would get p is equal to 8 minus 1 fifth q. What we notice is that we said before that marginal, just about anything, is the derivative of the total of that thing with respect to quantity. So it's going to be the case that marginal revenue is equal to the derivative of total revenue with respect to quantity, so we need to come up with some sort of formula for total revenue in terms of quantity so that we can actually take the derivative. So here, total revenue, of course, if we're selling all of our output at the same price, is just equal to price times quantity. So what we can do now is because we know that this total revenue, we're going to be producing and charging a price at some point along the demand curve. So we know that the relevant price and quantity are both going to be determined by that demand curve. So what we can do is we can just plug in this equation here that we have for price. We can say our total revenue, because it's the demand that's the limiting factor here, is just going to be our price, which is 8 minus 1 fifth Q times Q. Or to multiply this out, our total revenue is equal to 8Q minus one-fifth q squared. Now we can use our rules of basic derivatives to take this derivative. And we notice that the derivative of 8q, because we just have a constant multiplying q to the first power, is just going to be 8 minus, well now we have a term with a q squared, so we end up with, as our derivative, 2 times one-fifth or two-fifths, times q to the two minus one power, which just gives us two-fifths q here. So we can see that our marginal revenue curve is equal to eight minus two-fifths q. Now you actually don't have to know a lot of calculus to be able to do this on your own, 
especially when we're talking about straight line demand curves. When we're talking about straight line demand curves, there's basically only one rule that you need to know, and that's this one here. So we have the derivative with respect to x, written d over dx, of something of the form some constant c times our variable x to some power n is equal to this here, cn times x to the n minus 1. So basically what we can see is that when we're taking the derivative, we reduce the power of our variable by 1. You notice we have x to the n here and x to the n minus 1 here. And we also take that power and we bring it down in front as part of our coefficient. Because before we just had as our coefficient on x this thing c, and now we have as our coefficient on x cn. And you can see how we apply that here. So 8q is just 8 times q to the first. So in that case, our c is 8 and our n is 1. So we just brought down the 1. 1 times 8 is 8 times q to the 0 power, because 0 is 1 minus 1. But q to the 0 power is just 1. So we're just left with 8 times 1, which was 8. Minus, because derivatives work in that way, that if you have two things added together or two things subtracted together, then the derivative is just the addition or subtraction of those component parts. So we can say the derivative of a plus b is equal to the derivative of a plus the derivative of b. We can also say that the derivative of a minus b is the derivative of a minus the derivative of b. So here we can just take each part independently and then just subtract them. So this part here, again, thinking about our rule, in this case our c is 1 over 5 and our n is 2. So we take the 2, we bring it down in front so that our total coefficient is 2 times 1 fifth, or 2 fifths. And then our new exponent on quantity, because q is our x variable in this, right? It's what we're taking the derivative with respect to. It's the thing that we're treating as the variable. So we take that power down by 1, so we go from q squared to q to the first, which is just q. So we can see here that there's, you know, there's really just one pattern to follow, so it shouldn't be too intimidating as long as we're dealing with straight line demand curves. If you had a demand curve that was of a different form, you would need to know more derivative rules in order to calculate marginal revenue. So coming back to the original point that the marginal revenue curve looked like the demand curve but was twice as steep, we can actually see why that is here. So if we compare our demand curve, and it's most helpful to compare the inverse demand curve to the marginal revenue curve, because when we use the inverse demand curve, we have the thing on the y-axis, which is price, in terms of the thing on the x-axis, which is quantity demanded. Similarly, we're graphing marginal revenue as our dependent variable here, obviously in units of dollars per unit, and we're graphing it as a function of quantity. So it's really these two guys here that we want to be comparing. And what we can see is that they do, in fact, hit the vertical axis at the same point. Because if we plugged in 0 for quantity for both of them, we would see that our dependent variable was equal to 8 in both cases, like we saw here. We can also see that our marginal revenue curve is, in fact, twice as steep because it has a coefficient of negative 2 over 5, whereas our demand curve has a coefficient of negative 1 over 5. We can also see, we can confirm that this rule holds that the marginal revenue curve hits the quantity axis at a quantity that's half of where the demand curve hits the quantity axis. And we can plug in here and confirm that price is in fact equal to 0 when quantity is equal to 40. Because we have 40 times 1 over 5 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. Just give us this point here. We can also look and see that the marginal revenue curve is going to hit the horizontal axis at a quantity of 20, 
Because if we were to plug in a quantity of 20 here, 20 times 2 over 5 is in fact equal to 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. So our marginal revenue is 0 when our quantity is 20. If we wanted to generalize this result so we didn't have to keep doing this math over and over, we could say the following. Let's say we just take a general linear demand curve here. Quantity demanded is equal to A minus B times price. That this should work whenever A and B are non-negative. We should get something that makes sense as a downward sloping demand curve. And we could do the following. We could still solve for P. And notice that this would just turn into an inverse demand curve of P is equal to A over B minus 1 over B times quantity. And then we could plug that in to our total revenue formula, and we would get that total revenue is equal to A over B times Q minus 1 over B times Q squared. And then we could see that marginal revenue is just the derivative of total revenue with respect to quantity, so that that would just be A over B minus 2 over B times quantity. Again, we could see here if we compared price to marginal revenue, that the vertical intercept is going to be the same for both curves, but the marginal revenue curve is going to be twice as steep. And now you can see for whatever your coefficients A and B are here, if you wanted to, you could just plug them in to this marginal revenue formula directly. Again, this particular result only holds for straight line demand curves. However, you could extend this pretty easily to any demand curve that you could be given. So you would probably be given a demand curve as quantity demanded as a function of price. And regardless of what that demand curve looked like, you could still solve for price. Plug price into total revenue here and get something that was total revenue only in terms of quantity. And then you could take the derivative of that to get marginal revenue that what we're doing here isn't actually dependent on a straight line demand curve. It's just if you don't have a straight line demand curve, you might have to know more rules of calculus in order to get from total revenue to marginal revenue. But in general, the procedure is pretty much the same.